Hello, everyone. Welcome to our fourth webinar of our webinar series. We are privileged today to have Dr. Sot Lavitsa and Dr. Mina Hadahaju to share with us their wisdoms on technological and pedagogical innovations through STEAM education to foster creativities in a digital era and interactive embedded diagrams in online classrooms. A few very quick announcements today before we begin. There will be no webinar on next week, May 18. Um, during the webinar, you will be, you'll remain muted. If you have any questions, please send us those questions through the private chat box to the host and or the co-host, Mina or Mimi. The webinars will be recorded and shared publicly on YouTube tomorrow. Thank you. So, stage is yours. Okay. So, I'm just trying to Okay, so I think it will work now. So do you see my uh, slides? Not yet. So I need to share it, right? Yes, please share your screen. Okay. Okay, so. Just a second. Mm -hmm. It somehow okay. Does it work now? It's coming. Yes, thanks. Okay, good. So, uh, good afternoon or good morning for some of you. I'm very uh, glad to to be part of the in this seminar. And uh, thank you for the, the invitation for Mina to, to, to give this talk. And uh, as I know, then the, the topic of the seminar is, um, is mostly about how we can cope with uh, STEM education in this uh, uh, crisis. And um, one, what I thought that, that I could show you is that what we are working on in uh, Johannes Kepler University in STEAM education and then also how uh, we can utilize some of the, 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 um, the, the resources and, uh, and the pedagogies, one, but we are working in JKU and then you might get some inspiration. And many of these resources are, are available, um, it's, uh, it's free, and then we will be able to uh, help uh, everyone or, or just take the, these resources and then use it in your own teaching. So uh, I would like to give you uh, a brief introduction of, uh, of what we are doing and then maybe it will be interesting for you to, to look at uh, what it is. So uh, first I will introduce uh, our doctoral program and our research center and then also we are working on the development of GeoGebra and I will give you some research uh, from our institution some examples of STEAM education and then also some projects then that might be useful for you in, the, in, your, uh, in your work. So uh, I'm working in, uh, in Johannes Kepler University in Linz. I'm heading the doctoral school. We have uh, more than 35 PhD students and we have a research center on, uh, on STEAM education and we are doing lots of different kind of events, workshops, seminars, for example, this week we have a doctoral student conference together at the university in, in Cluj. And then we are having lots of visitors from all around the world to, to work and then to get inspired on STEAM education. Previously, I was uh, leading the, the doctoral program or then the research methods courses in, in Cambridge. So our work is very similar to the, to the um, uh, research methods courses in um, in Cambridge and then we are going through this whole research cycle with the students and then also we are hosting 
many people from all around the world to, to work together in different kinds of projects. And I will show you some of the projects we, we are working on. And at the same time, we are working uh, with GeoGebra. So GeoGebra is, uh, is funded by Professor Markus Hohenbatter, who is my colleague in Linz. And the GeoGebra Development Center is in, uh, is in Linz as well. And then probably many of you know GeoGebra. It's an open source project. And now it's covering all parts of mathematics. And then also it's used in, in many different kinds of subjects. So it's, uh, it's an extended tool but it's a big community as well so it's an open source project so it's free for all users and we have more than 100 million students and teachers who are using GeoGebra. but uh, the, the software was originally designed for secondary schools but now it's used from primary to to university level and for all different kind of purposes but what is important that the, the community is generating the, the resources and we have more than two, uh, 2 million resources available on, on the web, and then it's, uh, it's ready for, for you, uh, for, for everyone. And also we have a, a large community around uh, the world. Uh, we have more than 200 GeoGebra institutes in 120 countries. This is just people who are working on research and teacher development on GeoGebra, and we are a very inclusive group to to work in in this in this area so then this is the the center in linz what we are working on and then we are doing different kind of research so it's a, in the, the title that how we could introduce creativities and innovation in the edu into into education so i will outline some of the, the technological and pedagogical innovations but first we look at that what is uh, what is creativity we try to look at uh, creativity from many different perspectives and then try to uh, reintroduce in these kind of creative approaches and uh, my students are working on many different uh, kind of ways when uh, when creativity is done so creativity is defined in many different kind of ways and uh, there are hundreds of definitions of, uh, of creativity or creativities. And then we are trying to, to do a research on how we can define creativity and then how we can use in this kind of creativity in education. So for example, one of the, the approach, if you look at uh, fluency, flexibility and originality and used in this kind of terms of creativity to for the definition and then also how we can find different kind of creativities because uh, then there are many different ways how creativity can be approached and then also who we could encourage in this kind of creativity in in uh, our work for teachers and for students uh, in, the, in the schools so essentially when, what we are doing is um, probably i'd skip some of these slides so essentially when, what we try to do in our research and in in our development is do research on on technologies pedagogies and and policies to create conditions to introduce in this kind of creativity into education and then how we can uh, uh, carry out the, in these innovations in which could be utilized in schools or or universities around the world so we look at um, technological innovations and uh, within technological innovation we are very fortunate to be very close to the to the geogebra center but also we are trying to to look at uh, different kind of technologies which could be connected and integrated into um, a, a useful um, net network of, um, of of technological resources so now we are uh, we develop GeoGebra for all um, all kind of tech, uh, all kind of um, hardware from tablet phones to to uh, PCs. But one one that is important that and um, the, the technologies are changing very fast. And then how we can evaluate the the interfaces and then also the tasks then then that we could develop uh, for for teachers. 
So we are trying to look at all different kinds of tasks for, for different technological uh, resources and then offering help uh, to the community to, to utilize this. So in the online platform, one that we have created, it's, uh, it's now not only uh, a platform, but it's more like a social media um, application that, um, that you can uh, create um, similar uh, flows as in any social media application, but it's more like um, a, a place uh, where, where you can follow uh, different kind of authors and then work together with, uh, with the community. So maybe you can try some of these social media um, um, work. And then also we, we try to experiment that how to, to redefine uh, textbooks. So um, we, we can use the, the, this kind of textbooks for, uh, uh, then there are many different kinds of online textbooks, but what we try to, to create with, with GeoGebra is that, and that every teacher or every student can create their own textbook. So if you look at the, the GeoGebra books, then there are already tens of thousands of, of possible resources uh, which is uh, collected into books. And especially now, there are uh, lots of new resources are uh, created in the, in the community to assist teachers and students in the online teaching environment. But in these uh, books can be, can be also uh, connected to our online collaboration tool, which is allowing students and teachers work on the, the same uh, uh, platform from from different uh, places. We can also try to look at that how we can use the, in these uh, resources and books in um, in the diversified uh, environment. So we are creating live sessions when teachers and uh, and students can work together, and then the teachers can follow uh, students' work. And then it's also integrated into our uh, learning management system, a virtual environment, which is called GeoGebra Books. Then, then that could be, um, it, it, it is possible to, to create a virtual classroom and then use in this environment uh, together with the students. And of course, it could be connected to many other uh, different technologies as well. But what, what we try to do in the, in the past months to, to create this environment, to, to offer all different kinds of online resources for, for students and, uh, and for teachers as well. And then we also integrate new kind of tools into, into, into the work. So for example, there is a large group who is working on automatic reasoning. So then what we can do, we can create uh, different examples and then it could provide uh, instant feedback uh, for, uh, for the students to, to solve these problems. And then we could create uh, in this environment for the students as well. But also when, what we try to do is uh, utilizing the, the technologies, uh, for example, for the, um, for the cell phones. So we can assign students uh, some experiments. We were just uh, looking at some uh, outside uh, work in the, uh, at home. So there is a, a sensor application within GeoGebra. So in each phone, you can use all the, um, the, the sensors and then you can collect data or ask students to, to collect data. So for example, if students want to, to measure gravity, then we could ask that turn on the sensors and then throw the phone and then collect the data and then analyze the data to, to measure gravity. But of course, we, we can put it into a box and, and, and so on, or, or we can devise different kinds of environments within the, the phone and then using the, the, the functions um, in which we created either in the, the classroom or online to, to analyze this data and then share this data uh, among uh, the, the students. And then, for example, if we just walk around in the, in the house or on the street, we can just take our phone and then use the, this data to, to analyze the, the, the movements from what we are, what we are taking. Uh, also, 
uh, but what we try to uh, do and then it's accelerating um, quite a lot in the in the past months to integrate uh, GeoGebra as a as a, a test tool so we, we can turn on uh, GeoGebra as a, as a test device so it, it is possible now to, to use GeoGebra for uh, testing both online testing and uh, on-site testing so we have a large experiment in, in New York to, to use GeoGebra instead of calculators for, for testing and then we can use these apps to to involve the, the assessment and then what is the advantage that then that it could be go from online to uh, to the to the personal um, environment as well we have a, a new feature which is the augmented reality so today uh, with one of my students uh, ben who is also in the, in the seminar we were writing a paper to to model um, model different uh, environments around the house so we, we just created this uh, environment in uh, in luxembourg that students go around and then they are modeling uh, architecture or different objects and then uh, use augmented reality apps as a as a solution to 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 give uh, to the to the teachers and then learn mathematics through the, this kind of augmented reality app. Or also, we could, um, uh, we could um, put any kind of mathematical ob objects around the room, so we can send students these files or ask the students to create uh, these um, uh, files, and then uh, students just explore uh, these uh, uh, functions in the in the room as well so this is another example then um, we can create some kind of objects and then use it in the in the room to 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 walk around and uh, and uh, explore mathematics so from from this point um uh, I don't know if you still hear me because uh, there, there was some strange noise. Yes, we can hear you yeah. well. Okay, good. And then uh, one, what we can also do then that we can connect uh, these um, uh, uh, 3D um, uh, applications with 3D printing. So we are working with, uh, with different 3D printers. This is the, the workshop with uh, my students. And then also we are working with mathematical artists and I will show you some of these examples that when then we can go from the, the real world to augmented reality to 3D printing as well. And then as I mentioned to you, uh, Ben and uh, my colleague Eve just created um, an egg cup competition in the, um, in the past months when uh, students were able to create these egg cups and then uh, if students had their own 3D printers, then they printed it. But uh, the, the Ministry in Education in, um, in Luxembourg printed this uh, egg cup competition. And then you can look at the website and then see that how students engaged in, in, the, in this kind of design of, uh, of different egg cups. And I will show you some more examples. So this is a recent example. And then also Ben is now running a, a virtual assistant, a robot assistant uh, a workshop. I think he started uh, today. And then being this, in this kind of cycle of, uh, of different kind of technologies and connecting um, physical and digital resources uh, could be complemented in, in this way. And also, one what we uh, encountered is that there are millions of resources. So it's not, not a problem to find resources on the, on the web, but uh, these open educational resources are just probably too overwhelming for many teachers and it's difficult to find uh, these, um, these resources. So one of my PhD students run a, a project that's how we can evaluate the quality of these resources 
and um, we can find and, and, and the findings and then also we try to integrate the results for the search that we could personalize and then the different kind of resources and then when it's used then the teachers or professors can um, change it for their own needs in the in the classroom as well the other thing then that how we are trying to um, integrate or uh, reintroduce uh, creativity and then finding uh, some kind of formative assessment is that detecting creativities with machine learning so we have uh, a project with my uh, phd student in israel to to measure creativity so we we assign some problems online for the, the students they solve the, the, these kind of problems and with, with different uh, kind of um, approaches and there are some machine learning algorithms which can detect the, the creative jump when the, when the students have this aha moment to to detect something is uh, is interesting and uh, we, we could uh, develop uh, in this project to notify the teachers that uh, something interesting happened uh, with the students so then they can connect the students as well but also then this kind of tools could also help us to to give formative assessment or not only to to assess the the end products of the the, the problems but look at the, the entire process of um of um of the, the the solution within the students and then and work on this so to be able to help the, 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 the large community, we are looking at uh, usability research. So we try to look at uh, eye tracking, that how we could uh, help um, the, the design of the software. We are designing new features. So for example, this is the step-by-step the, the, the -step, uh, folder, a step-by-step -step solver. And um, we are creating uh, GeoGebra nodes which is an online um, desktop or online um, virtual table uh, application so you can draw and then you can share all of these resources with then the students and there are thousands of problems already uh, with, with this kind of recent notes and then uh, based on this one what we try to do is create maps of uh, of different functions so if you look at uh, one what we are creating now is that trying to make the, the users to find and uh, the the applications uh, much more easily so these are some of them the te and the technological innovations what we are working on but what is what is even more important is to to work on pedagogical innovations so what kind of pedagogical innovations we are working on so uh, as I said, it's it's very easy to to find resources now, but also in the, the digital environment or online uh, lessons. That one, what are the misconceptions that the students encounter compared to the um, compared to the environment in the in the traditional teaching environment? So, one of my PhD students who just finished uh, last year worked on on functional mis misconceptions in digital environments. And then also, one what we try to do is uh, is try to to create environments uh, with the, with the elements of gamification. So we have gamification in uh, in many educational applications. Or if we buy something on Amazon or 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 buying or booking a room, then there are many different kind of gamification elements. And then also this this gamification is there in. Um, in educational apps but what we try to do is try to help the, the teachers and the students to create their own uh, specific gam gamification environment so Cecilia is working on a, a gamification environment that every teacher or every student can create their own gamification and then also Fabian is uh, is working on that how we can use this kind of gam gamification environment for preparing teachers for um, for then their classroom to use gamification. Um, my other uh, recent uh, PhD student, um, Robert Weinhandel, just finished his uh, work on, on Flip Classroom. And there are, there are lots of resources on his website 
at who we can introduce flipped classroom beyond videos. So there are many different uh, uh, ways to, to introduce uh, this flipped classroom environment. Or my other peer student, Stephanie, is looking at how these flipped classroom environments can be enhanced with, um, with augmented reality and, and 3D printing as well. Um, uh, Shireen, um, a student in Egypt, looking at uh, architecture, that how we can use in this kind of innovative teaching and then innovative technologies like AR and 3D printing to, to look at architecture and then how to find the, the mathematics. And then she's creating um, architecture maps in uh, Egyptian architecture to, 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 to create uh, lessons for and then also different scenarios when students are moving from uh, the real world to, to digital and from digital to, to, the, to the physical world. But also what we can do is uh, integrate uh, games into, into the, in this kind of environment. So one of our, our main uh, area of research that how do we connect then the physical and the digital world? And then in, the, in this um, uh, pandemic environment, it's, it's very, very important that then that we are moving in the, in the digital world, but also we can connect the, the, the physical environments as well. And then games are one of the, one of the possibilities what, what we can do. So we are trying to design different kinds of games. And also in these kind of games uh, could be uh, done on paper, could be done in augmented reality on digital world, and then also connected to, uh, to 3D printing as well, or just, just creating the, in this kind of environment. So games are are integral part of this connecting the, the physical and digital world. So Diego started to work actually in Canada on um, in, uh, in a school in, uh, in Calgary to, to create um, uh, online uh, games, which is also available now to, to try. And then if we can personalize these games, so for example, uh, students are taking their own pictures. So first they, they use the, the logo of the school in Calgary to, to create a game, but afterwards then they could create this game uh, with their pictures. And then they started to, to design games uh, in, uh, in digitally and in, in physical world. So then they can move between the, the physical and digital games. So they created different kind of quattro games. And then also then the set game or logic faces, which is also possible to, uh, to, uh, ver, uh, to, to use in, uh, in, uh, in different kind of environments as well. So then there are many different kind of games. So for example, if you take, uh, if you ask students to take their own picture, you can rotate and then their faces, and then at the end they can print a vase and then maybe if they can put some salt or or um, or um, sand into this waste, then they could do some measurements of the, the volumes of the, their head. Or uh, we are now running a, a competition for uh, dividing a cube uh, game, which is how to to divide a cube into equal volumes, and. Uh, we are already receiving hundreds of different kind of solutions, which is which is very diff uh, very creative for the students. So we also experiment with tiling. There are many different kind of tilings, and then it's just very simple um, uh, games in which could be done on any kind of environment, and then students are very motivated. This we also teach uh, with this cycle. Of, uh, of digital, physical, and then paper environments. And then we can uh, use in, in these kind of environments in, um, in the classroom. So Renata is working on teacher training with this uh, connecting the, the three different environments. And uh, we have a large 3D printing group. So one that uh, Eva is leading our 3D printing group. So we are working with blind students who, and then they created this um, um, application when, when they can turn 
photos into 3D printed um, photos and then blind students can work on it. But we had a project in Montenegro when we trained teachers who are working with, uh, with blind students and then coupling uh, uh, students with good eyesight and then blind students could create in, in this uh, science um, learning environment. And it was a very successful approach to, to look at this kind of um, work as well. So we look at board games, that how we can um, uh, create board games uh, physically and digitally, but also in these kind of board games could go beyond the, the, the classroom. So we can turn uh, a home or a school or a whole city into, into a game. Or uh, we can look at uh, origami. So actually now origami is, uh, is becoming a very important tool. And then also in this online environments. So my student, uh, Natalia, is looking at how to use origami together with augmented re reality, origami with, uh, with coding. So it's very easy to send the students the instru instructions and then use them the coding in their uh, environments, origami and 3D printing. And then also when we can uh, look at sustainable development uh, together with 3D printing or, or AR applications. And, um, and also Natalia is looking at how to connect coding and dancing, which is, um, I mean, which is uh, very interesting as well. Um, one, what kind of other um, things we, we can do? So students are engaged with uh, YouTubing and then creating uh, videos. So um, they are my student from Iceland is, uh, is working on silent videos. So silent videos, just short uh, videos with uh, no sound and students are um, required to, to annotate or uh, give them um, uh, talk aloud, uh, thinking about the, in these kind of videos, and then they are um, listening to each other's solutions, and then it, it gives them a very um, interesting um, environment to to discuss the, in these resources. And this could be also done in an online environment, and then students are very good in this kind of being a YouTuber. So we try to look at that what kind of media. Is, uh, is available, what kind of culture the students live, and then utilize the, this culture in this kind of work. So my other student, Julia, in, uh, in Torino, is looking at how we can utilize uh, mathematical memes. So there are lots of meme generators in, in, um, on the web. So we can create these kind of mathematical memes and then it provides a, a, a very good environment for them, the students to, to go in depth with, uh, with the mathematical uh, um, meanings. And, uh, and uh, Julia is doing amazing things with the mathematical means. So there are already thousands of these memes and then uh, a large study on how these means could be used for motivating and then also <clears throat> enhancing mathematical learning. So we look at uh, talented students to, to see that one, what kind of uh, work um, they are supposed to do. So Sarah is looking at why talented students are waiting so much in the, in the classroom. We have some robotics uh, projects. <clears throat> Probably I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little bit out of, uh, out of time, so in this kind of robotic games to be at the coding and, and roboting, robotics. And as well as we can look at how we can build drones and then modeling these kind of drones to, um, to enhance different kinds of mathematical knowledge. And then it, it could be done as, um, uh, as well with, uh, with very minimal resources and then used in this kind of resources for, for, um, for mathematical <clears throat> modeling as well. So Lajos, um, my prospective PhD students is looking at how to connect mathematics and music. 
and then also then the different kind of deliberate practice um, which is um, which is uh, done in uh, in the, in uh, in a special military education but also we can connect uh, big data with sustainable development so martin um, my phd student who is submitting this week is looking at how we can use the donut model to to teach sustainable development and and global warming to the students as well so maybe i skip some of the the slides and um, on the, on then there is another interesting uh, project, the Photogebra in Argentina. So students are taking pictures in their homes or in their surroundings and then model uh, the, in these um, photos uh, in the GeoGebra and then they are analyzing it. And this is the, the, the solution. So there is a, a whole movement in South America to, to, to create um, photos and, uh, and, and games. And uh, my colleague uh, Barbara Sabitzer is looking at computational thinking and, uh, and coding. So we have a, a cool lab where, um, where students are practicing uh, coding, robotics, augmented reality, and then all different kinds of things. So um, Tim, these are some of them, the, the pedagogical innovations, and then uh, probably a skip um, assessment. And, uh, and maybe I have five more minutes or, or sure, I can please go ahead. Yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. So then these are some of the pedagogical innovation, but uh, my title was STEAM education. So what do we mean on, uh, on STEAM education that connecting this kind of uh, transdisciplinary learning? So for example, I can give um, an example on, on connecting physical and digital worlds. My colleague uh, Christoph uh, Fenversi from uh, Finland and Diego in, in Brazil. So Christoph, I think, is in the in the audience. They are working on on different kind of steam um, uh, sequences. So one of the in the in these sequences that modeling, for example, with the geodesic dome. So it it's now starts from the from the physical modeling but it could start from, from digital and then only online uh, applications. So students are building this geodesic dome from uh, for 40 frame, which is, a, which is a Korean architecture project. If I would have time later, I can explain that what it is. So students are building the, these kind of uh, domes in uh, groups, usually 25 students in five teams. They are working on, on this. And then it's a very complex uh, structure with more than a thousand uh, pieces. So students are building this um, this dome, and then this gives them some kind of insight and inspiration, and uh, in the the beginning, and then they are analyzing all of the, in these resources in uh, in the software environment, and then they can look at uh, the mathematics behind the the building of this uh, geodesic dome. So they can recognize patterns. They they can recognize. The, the the symmetries and uh, and so on, but this geodesic dome is a is a very rich environment, I mean which could be extended for a whole semester or a whole year of uh, investigation on different uh, parts of mathematics, arts, uh, architecture, and and so on. So, for example, in Finland, uh, Christoph was um, was part of the, the project to build the the largest um, geodesic dome. In, in the world, so then they create, they build this geodesic dome, which was a very complex um, endeavor with um, um, with architects and engineers, students working together. So I mean, this became a, a project when thousands of students um, participated, and then also it went back to the classroom to to look at architecture and um, and for example origami. And, uh, and different uh, kind of aspects, how the, this geodesic uh, dome is connected to the to the culture, but also we can go to the to the more extreme. We can go to the uh, mathematical hairdresser and then use this uh, kind of dome uh, project in in the in the classroom as well. So we have, we organize a conference. Uh, actually, next year it will be in Canada, yeah. which. Uh, 
you can have a, a geodesic dome haircut if you <laughs> if you are interested. Okay, so then this is one example of the of uh, of STEAM education, and then also we are looking at um, with um, Diego. We looked at uh, a book of Leonardo da Vinci, and then we try to recreate some of the work of Leonardo da Vinci. So for example, this bridge on digital and physical environments. And then students learn many different things in this, in this physical and, and digital worlds. Or we can create um, um, in this machine, I forget the name. And then, of course, you can create it in, in 4D frame. And then at the, at the same time, you can create it in, in GeoGebra. And then students are learning many different kinds of skills connecting the, the physical and, and the digital world. So then these kind of exercises could be done only on, on physical spaces, but also in, in, uh, in digital environments. And the students for very uh, basic materials can create some of these exercises. So uh, to, to give you a little bit more overview of what kind of other projects we are looking at. So we are looking at cultural influences and then and, uh, using the, the culture for learning mathematics. So we look at mandalas and then we are doing lots of mandala workshops, which is uh, part of the, the, the culture in many countries. So we can do it in this kind of mandalas from drawing and from, um, from vegetables. And then we eat the, the mandalas together with the, the students. But also it, it can be done in a, in a digital world uh, as well. And then using these kind of exercises. And then the, these, these kind of exercises could be done only online uh, as well. And there are some mathematical arts projects. For example, this is in South Africa when, when students are creating mathematical arts and then learning mathematics through creating arts in, um, in different places. So now currently there is still time to, to submit uh, mathematical arts for, for students. So probably there are thousands of, of entries or, or making students coding uh, with um, with music so we had a project in cambridge when students were djing while uh, doing coding uh, together yeah, and um, and so on and then mathematics dancing and movement which is also could be assigned online and then in physical spaces as well we work together with the arts electronica center when we are creating um different um workshops and environments to 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 assign the, these kind of things with students and then what i want to show last year we had a a, a big workshop in the, the national uh, mathematics museum in new york but what is important is that we organize the bridges conference which will be in canada next year and then two years ago it was in waterloo so it's mathematical art so for example we are connecting, uh, this is a, um, a pancake printer. So students design their own pancakes and then we print and then they eat the, these kind of pancakes. And then, so this was the, the, the oh, sorry. This was the, the Canadian um, project in which we, we did in, in Canada and Probably I will finish up some of them, the projects. So we had very interesting uh, speakers. So this is uh, Ernie Rubik, who is also looking at the designs of, uh, of education after creating the, the Rubik cube. We are looking at different mandalas. And uh, then this Bridges conference was in Linz last year. This year was supposed to be in, uh, in Finland, but unfortunately we had to cancel it. But next year it will move to Canada. And um, we have a Met City Map project when we can take mathematics to the outside and then work uh, with, with students. Hopefully and after one, pandemic. One, yeah, yeah, and after the, the pandemic. So there are lots of books available. 
on creativity and, and mathematics education. We have a network on, on STEAM uh, group, so if you have the, the slides, you can uh, use it. And then we are growing a big community on GeoGebra Arts and STEAM on Facebook. And then you are very welcome to, to join, to share some of these really exciting resources. So I think I will finish up the, the presentation to invite you to, to, to look at what we are doing, use all of these kind of things. And, um, and you are very welcome to visit us or join our online seminars and conferences. And, um, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Joe. It was, it was really beautiful. I, I really enjoyed it. It was so interesting to learn about how using um, GeoGebra or maybe other platform could help students to become more, um, I would say, creative and innovative. So just because um, the main aim of this kind of webinars is to see what are the potential of use of um, using uh, digital applets in uh, online classroom as far as we move to, pan to, to, to online classes after the pandemic, I would like to share a little bit of my own experience about uh, um, using uh, dynamic um, and interactive diagrams in online situation. So as you see, Proter describes an ideal mathematics classroom where students actively engage in doing mathematics, making interdisciplinary connections, sharing mathematical ideas with each other, and using manipulative strategies to solve mathematical problems. This is one of those videos that I've um, captured from one of my classes. Um, so in face-to-face -face classroom, teachers take moment-by-moment -moment actions and make decisions that are informed by evidence of students' understanding in order to facilitate students' learning. Um, teachers elicit students to think through many tactics, such as observing um, during problem solving, informal interviews during classes, or using focus questions during mathematical discussions so that they can adjust their instruction accordingly. However, keeping such strategies up in online or hybrid classrooms usually become very challenging for both teachers and, and students at the same time. So it seems difficult to preserve the crucial role of all the forms of mathematizing in students' life experience, including reading, writing, speaking, drawing, and doing mathematics, as well as assessment. Um, on the other hand, the um, abstract argument presented in Euclid um, elements rely heavily on the use of diagrams and this use of visual representation remained an acceptable practice in mathematics well into the 18th century as Estilo and Silver um, said in their, um, in their notes. Moving forward, we have interactive diagrams or interactive embedded diagrams that are available to different platforms, whether GeoGebra, Cabri, or Cabri3D, Geometry Sketchpad, and Cinderella, that can be added uh, or embedded in different learning management systems, including Blackboard, Desire to Learn, Module, Sakai, Canvas, and others. Um, also, there is a capability that these kind of um, um, Diagrams can be added um, and embedded in Google's, Google sites, personal website that they follow HTML or Java. <clears throat> um, also, they can be added in notebooks and teams. Um, those interactive diagrams can be pre-constructed or constructed, but they require action and participants, participation from learners. Um, interactive diagrams can be modified, they can be manipulated, they can be to explore in any dynamic geometry environment, um, such as GeoGebra. Dragging is a conceptual tool that can be used in, uh, uh, in such an environment. So a well-constructed interactive embedded diagram provides an environment enriched by multiple representation. As you move the object, you will see all these different and um, varied representation, as well as direct, continuous, real-time, and interactive manipulation in an online mathematics classroom. Um, so to use interactive diagrams in learning management system, as you see in this video, um, 
uh, I've asked my students to do construction and exploration with interactive diagrams exploring um, spherical geometry. Um, none of these students had mathematical background, but they were really good enough to use the um, GeoGebra in that learning management system, um, which resulted in student content and uh, student content, student and student interaction, and uh, indirect student and teacher interaction. Like they were uh, commenting on each other work, they were communicating with mathematics through constructing the diagrams. And also I was able to uh, comment on their um, construction and their mathematics learning. Um, there were also student written responses about the pre-constructed sketches and interactive embedded um, student construction that could be served as a tool for formative assessment. As you see here, a student were not only, for, for example, in this uh, um, assignment, they were asked to create golden ratio or um, prove that, and then prove that this is a golden ratio um, rectangle. So they were using different approaches to um, not only create this, but also prove that their construction is valid. Um, for example, in the second example, my students were not able to create the shape um, in a way that it should be, so the shape could not pass the drag test. In the third example, you see that the student used the calculation to um, show that it is a golden ratio. And the last example that I have here, there is no written um, or explanation about how these golden ratios, golden ratio, golden rectangles are, are created. But for me as an instructor, there is no need to be written um, explanation because I can see how my students were able to create not only one, but also two <laughs> and three golden ratio within this construct. So this is my own experience um, about using interactive diagrams in an online um, um, platform. Um, one of the projects that I've asked my student was to, after they were creating their own project, which for another course was creating fractals. Again, this student had no mathematical background and they were using their own um, artistic way of thinking about mathematics to create fractals using GeoGebra. They were encouraged to share their, the way that they've constructed um, the fractals and they were very interested and they took this opportunity to create this um, YouTube channel that was a shared YouTube channel to share how they were able to create fractals with the description and explanation and step-by-step showing their work to their colleagues. Um, yeah, so this is part of my experience um, in this online platform using interactive, interactive diagrams. Um, if there is any questions, we are ready to take them. I think we've already received the question from AV that it is for usual. So the question is that with so many technological, how do you choose which align best with your learning outcomes? Uh, what is the question? With so many technical technological options that you just showed to us, how mm -hmm. do you choose which align best with your learning outcomes? So when, when what we try to do is, uh, is offering a wide range of possibilities but one what is our experience that every teacher and then every situation and every country has the different kind of needs so one what we try to do is a uh, is a wide range of uh, of possibilities to to show that what is possible but um, but i think every teacher and uh, every um everyone who is uh, part of the in this or trying to to do the in this kind of innovation should uh, adopt it for their own uh, situation. So uh, what we try to do is showing what is possible and then everyone is just uh, creating their own environment based on on the, on the things from what we are showing. And then we try to, to support as, as many um, opportunities as possible. It seems like there's a large upfront amount of time 
that um that would be necessary for uh, a teacher who wants to use one of these to spend mm -hmm. you do you have a um uh like are are there um uh some of these tools that uh you suggest if we need to use to do something quickly uh with like um uh now with not having much time to prepare <laughs> for courses like ideally i would spend a year preparing for like a course or something but um do you have some tools that that would be would be quicker to use than others so then then there are lots of quick guides on the on the web we have webinars but i think then the geogebra resources website then we have lots of these, these resources so you can just collect them or download them and then modify it uh, how you how you need it and uh, so then there is already available and in this kind of um, resources and then also but uh, but it's coming out from the from the research uh, from my phd students barbara who are uh, evaluating uh, quality of resources then if you find some of the the authors of these uh, exercises they, they are having a collection of materials and then probably following the, this author and then using their resources or adapting their resources is one of one of them the quickest way to to integrate it into into someone's own uh, teaching but of course then there are lots of webinars and and online uh, courses videos and, and so on available but probably then, then the quickest is to to find some of the resources what you like and then start and then looking at the the authors who are creating the in these resources and then using some of these resources from them i don't know if it's an answer to the to the question that that is probably the quickest way what we found so far So I think there is no sound now. So Mina, I think you're um, sorry. <laughs> I was saying there is another question. Yes, it was. Yes. Sorry. So there is another question for you in chat box. Mm -hmm. Would you like to answer that? You must choose. Um, um, that is then the question. Apart from the many resources that you are making available of every kind, I don't really understand the relationship between creativity aspects and the need for online teaching and learning. So according, yeah. go ahead, please. So um, for creativity, so one, what we, we what we try to do is, uh, is try to, to create in this kind of creative approaches, then, then that could be uh, done in the, in the classroom. And then also try to look at that one, what kind of, how we can promote the, the different kind of creativities. And then we have researchers like Pam Bernard, who is a professor in, in Cambridge uh, on uh, and creativity. And, and then there is a, a, a trend that there, there are many different kinds of creativities, now not only one uh, kind of creativity. And then we, we try to look at that holding these kind of approaches and resources uh, could be in um could be related in this in this kind of creativities as well um could i pose another question because it was my question but it was not mm -hmm. finished okay this is francesca hello hi uh so my point was that the definition that you are using of creativity as far mm -hmm. as i know um, it's attributing creativity according to the three features of Guilford mm -hmm. uh, definition to the individual. So that creativity is a competency or a property of a student. Mm -hmm. And you are also saying that um, students are motivated or engaged with your uh, uh, resources but the point is that saying that somebody is motivated or engaged does not necessarily implicate uh, mm -hmm. creativity and also 
I think that's different from saying that the mathematical activity or, ex or experience is creative. So, mm -hmm. so my question in the end was, uh, how could your pedagogical innovations and materials really afford creative activities? And in which sense could we investigate how these activities are creative? Mm -hmm. So the, the definition of Guilford is only for that, that project. All right. The, that uh, Roy's project. So, when, uh, so in then that project, what, what we try to do is then that we are um, installing uh, these kind of data listeners to, to GeoGebra to look at that what the students are doing, that how they are moving the, the, the mouse, how, uh, when, when, what they are uh, doing this, and when, what they are doing with, um, uh, with uh, the, the, the specific uplets. And then when, what we try to do that used in this kind of data listeners, so then there are um, possible uh, data streams in which is coming out from the uh, from from GeoGebra, then we can analyze some machine learning to look at that uh, when the so then there is this theory of creative jump which means the students are trying trying and then uh, something happens and then they can do a solution and then they can do different kind of solutions so when when I show that um, uh, definition of, of creativity is uh, is was for then that uh, specific uh, project. So for other projects, we are uh, we are, for other projects we are uh, usually have more than this kind of exploratory approaches when when we are observing students and then interviewing students and then try to see that what how uh, creativity is uh, is related to the to the specific activity so for example ben is here i think in the in the group and uh, we are doing a project with augmented reality and 3d printing in uh, in luxembourg and then we, we try to assess from the, the students that one one what kind of things and um, they are um, getting out from the um, uh, from the, the activities and then how we could um, create tasks in which are, are more um, inspiring for, for them to, to, to create in different kind of uh, solutions. How, how do you measure the inspiration? So I, I think at, at this stage one what we are what we are doing is more like an, an exploratory method we don't have measurements besides um, um, uh, Roy's project, but maybe Ben can say something about his project as well. So Mina, is it possible to, yeah. Hi Ben. Hello, hi. Uh, yes, so uh, we are experimenting a lot with AR, 3D printing from kindergarten to grade four. And um, we are measuring how the students react, how the parents react to remote teaching, uh, how their relationship changes in working on these um, designs. So we're collecting very much different data. And, uh, and then we have to see uh, what we can do with this data. So. Um, we are from one project to another. We are going to see uh, uh, what's happening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have another question from one of our participants. Um, I just don't know from where it starts. So she or he, I don't know, <laughs> asked you must choose those are best for the needs of the students maybe you can experiment many of these and use the most wanted or the most voted i think this is an answer to av's question mm -hmm. maybe you can experiment many of these and use the best one um no that is not the question uh, it was just an answer okay good and if there is anyone who um who have an, a, a question for our for our guests um, you can unmute yourself and start asking your question now. Please go ahead. Hatem, you can unmute yourself.
So the question that came from Hatem is that how can we evaluate the STEAM projects done by students online? Hi, how are you? Hi, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, my question is uh, nowadays we can't, we, uh, students can, uh, can't go to school. So when we, uh, we, we, uh, we give him a, a STEAM project, uh, we should evaluate this this project, this project. So, uh, how can we evaluate this project online to be very um, uh, to be very uh, to be fair? Uh, fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, I think assessment in in stream steam project is uh, is very tricky. Not, yeah. not, not, not even online, but but in the um, in the the real world as well so when but what we what what we are trying to do is um so we, we, we try to look at holistically that home home what, what the students are creating and then how much energy they are putting into the into their work so in the in the, the, the projects one what we are doing with ben and with many other students we are usually uh, again getting uh, some uh, products and then also the, the explanation that how and why the, the students are creating the, this kind of um, activities and then we usually work together with the students in, in groups so they are they are creating um, a group projects like uh, what we did with uh, the geodesic dome uh, projects and then they are collectively um, submitting uh, these um, uh, projects and then also one what we try to ask then the students that what kind of roles they they played in the in the in the group and essentially one what we do is trying to to assess in, in this kind of role so we usually don't assign grades because uh, it's not it's not not necessary for for doing these kind of projects, but it's more like a formative assessment and feedback, and then how they, they could go forward from uh, from that point as well. So uh, assigning grades in, in STEAM projects, I think it's very uh, complicated, and then also assessment, and then the the online environment is is making it even more complicated. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a quick question, um, Jules. I'm not sure. I'm just asking. Maybe um, is there a new way in GeoGebra that can help the instructor to collect data when they use GeoGebra as um, a sort of assessment? Like I don't know how it works. Um, is it a new? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so. So if you want to collect or assign students work, there is this GeoGebra groups. So you can create a virtual classroom in, uh, in GeoGebra and then you can assign uh, problems and then you can also collect in these kind of problems and then look at that which stage then the, the students are being in. Yeah. So um, you can create a group, you can invite the students. So students have to be registered and then, then you can assign a code where the students can log in and then you can follow the students. It's uh, like a very basic uh, learning management system, okay. but it's uh, more like uh, GeoGebra files, but also you can assign, for example, in, uh, in GeoGebra books, you can assign videos and, um, and PDFs and then text as well. And then also for the, the assessment, then you can create um, tests with, which is self-evaluating. So, um, you you can get the, the file or you can now it, then there is a possibility when um, when the solution is also integrated into the into the into the file so GeoGebra can check by itself in, with some kind of algorithm whether whether the students uh, solve the problem and then also there is now a new possibility to have automatic feedback mm -hmm. for uh, for some of the, the steps. It's not all kind of um, 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 types of, of uh, exercises, 
both for numeric and then some geometric tests. So maybe, maybe I showed this. Um, uh, I saw I showed the um, uh, automatic reasoning tool. So we use this automatic reasoning tool for the assessment of, of geometric uh, tests. Wonderful, thank you. Do we have other questions, suggestions?